A newborn babe might look at a toy with curiosity, much like a camel may watch a man unicycle across the steppes of Kazakhstan with a similar sentiment. As rational creatures, human beings look for meaning in everything, but whilst they're often so good at finding meaning in everything else, they often fail to provide an explanation for their own behaviour. This unicyclist, whom we'll come to know as Edward Pratt, has cycled around the world. But what is his true motivation? Perhaps to support a charity? Perhaps he's just a little mad. Sometimes, when there's too many mosquitoes, you've got to do the mosquito dance. This helps, trust me. There's too many mosquitoes! Go away! Nobody likes you! Go away! Perhaps he's simply a pioneer, driven by a deep sense of adventure and friendship. <laughs> However, Ed's simply a case study, a celebration of curiosity. I can only suggest his motivation. <laughs> The name's Pratt. <laughs> Ed Pratt. Ed has, uh, from a young age, forged his own character. Make the decision and then work out how he's going to do it. And if mm. he wants to do that, then there'll be a way somehow. If he doesn't want to do something, then... You cannot get him to do it. You cannot get him to do it. We met Ed the very first time for four hours, and he probably said no more than 100 words. Uh, and I think I thought, gosh, I expected someone to be a bit more, a bit more vocal. but. We then thought about it and thought, actually, if, if Ed's going to spend at least two years on his own, he's not going to be a big talker and a big people person. He's going to be someone who's very, very comfortable in his own skin and very, very happy in his own time. Uh, and so I think we possibly got the measure of Ed's character wrong to start off with. And we went over to Ed's house and his mum was showing us around the house and, and just telling us a few stories about his childhood and how he wanted to build a tree house in a field down the road that was a farmer's treehouse, but he, um, he took apart a shed in his garden and carried every single bit of that shed to build this treehouse. And how many kids would do that? One day, I was just like, you know what? That looks like a good tree, so I'll, I'll, put, I'll put a treehouse up in that. So I got in touch with the guy that owned this land, and he said, yeah, sure, you can do it. Um, and I spent just a few weeks just bashing bits of wood and, and making basically just a shed in a tree. Uh, but this <laughs> next item mm. is a very different item. Yes, it is. Tomorrow morning, a young man from Somerset is setting yeah, out yeah. on a round-the-world tour on a That's unicycle. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's so weird. I think initially when it real, I realised it was going to happen, I can't say I welcomed it. It did feel like, OK, <laughs> this... Um, this is quite big, really, isn't it? And, and, and kind of wanted it to go away, but it grew and he was clearly planning <laughs> to do it. So, yeah, you want what your kids want, don't you? So, yeah. <laughs> From a very early age, we thought you'd do something unusual, but we didn't know what it was, and we never suspected mm. it might be unicycling around the world. I think it must have been the final year of school when we were looking at going to university, and Ed was like, university's not for me. Yes, well, well when you decided you'd do it, it was the day you got your A-level results. <laughs> After his girlfriend introduced him to unicycling the year earlier, he decided that's what he was going to do. Didn't he just say, oh, by the way, nobody's ever circumnavigated the globe on a unicycle? And then sort of walked off. <laughs> I mean, and just yeah. let it sink in. She had a small, like, um, maybe like 16 inch unicycle in the back of her garage and gave it to Ed and said, Oh, you might enjoy this. And well, he did. And watching him go out the yard, off down the road, not knowing when we were going to see him again, how that was going to be, what his journey was like, it was all an unknown. I am excited. <laughs> This is going to be good. He said it would originally take him 18 months, and three and a bit years later, he returned. Edward, happy birthday to me. This is either really cool or a little bit sad. It went from 18 months to three and a half years because 
he wasn't like, I am going to go from A to B as quickly as I can. People have done that. Mark Beaumont did it in 80 days around the world, but you don't see any of it. So this is why it's taking him so long to get around the world. And, and it's not for anybody else apart from him. It's, it's, you know, he's not doing it because I want to get a Guinness Book of Record, I want to be the only... He's, he's seriously not, he just... Likes uh, unicycling yeah, and, and wanted to see the world, and that's all it boils down to, isn't it? Why I chose to do it on the unicycle, I'm, I'm questioning that. Oh, and he was amazing at just being able to yeah. go into a room, being invited yeah. to a house or room yeah. for a meal. I'm not quite sure what I've turned up to, well, I've got a bunch of... I think the whole village has come out to see me. Language was a complete barrier but he was absolutely brilliant at going in there and conversing with them in, in whatever way it took. I gotta let you know, no, you're never gonna regret it. So open up your eyes, you gotta be surprised. It'll be all right if you wanna make your photo run. It did get to the point where it meant it meant everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was his life every day, and he'd yeah. come that far, and he'd been there for so many years, he didn't yeah. want to... He didn't want to break the line, did he? There's no room to walk. There's the edge yeah. of the road where the traffic's running, and right there's the bloody rock face. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, I've done my damnedest to convince you. I can't force you, yeah. but I've done my damnedest to convince you. Okay. I feel good here. When I yeah. see you laying on the road, I can say, well, I told the guy he wouldn't believe me. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I can't get in the car. I just can't do it. I've been doing this for two and a half years. Well, I, I know that, but, it, is, but is it worth your life? He did go that way, and we met him not long after that, and again, a starry-eyed conversation, realising that he thinks he's gone over the line, he doesn't know if he's going to know when to stop. This trip means a lot to me, you know? And I don't want to stop it because of something so stupid as a back pain, you know? Who knows if I'll ever use this footage? I don't know. It's, uh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. Pull yourself together, Ed. This, is, this has been my life for the last two and a half years, and I'm, I'm struggling. I'm really, really struggling with this. Um, and, 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 and this is probably temporary, you know? Your body's gone and failed on me. I'm done. Like, I know I've said I'm done before, but I'm like, I'm... You know what? <laughs> Riding in the heat is so much worse. Oh, 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 oh. Clues. Yeah. <laughs> Parents. Parents. Don't forget us. Yeah. Don't forget to come back someday, will you? <laughs> At this point, you may be feeling a little curious. We may not know why Ed did what he did, but here is Ed himself to tell you what he did. At age 19, I set off. I crossed France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Serbia, Romania and Bulgaria to reach Turkey. I continued on and quickly snapped my unicycle. A rocky start to Asia, but many locals came to my rescue. I continued to Azerbaijan, ferried into Kazakhstan to then reach the Uzbek border. I started filming in the embassy and was denied a visa. I therefore had to take a thousand mile detour through Kazakhstan. Poor roads and no water, but I soon resorted to rather extreme measures of staying hydrated. Winter coming Kazakhstan. One gloomy evening, a car slipped over the gelled roads and heading straight towards me, I saw my life flash before my eyes. But luckily, another car overtaking at that very moment collided with it, saving my life. I decided to hunker down in Bishkek for the winter. I fell in love. I spent six months in Kyrgyzstan before continuing my journey. With a heavy heart, but a persistent spirit, I set off through China, taking six months to cross it and meeting Will, a cyclist who wore a Superman costume and underpants on the outside. I continued on through Vietnam and Laos, where I met the very man making this documentary about me today. And then I continued on to Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore to get to Australia, where I crossed the desert over three months. I turned off my GPS tracker to escape the curious eyes of my, at this point, worldwide following and reunited with my lover a week in northern India. Once again, stuffed with love, I flew to New Zealand, crossed it and continued to the USA, where I completed the last foreign leg of my journey and received a $370,000 payout school in a bag from Brad, who also unicycled across the States 40 years ago. Dad, what just happened? Yeah, you tell me. Pretty cool, Brad. I flew to Edinburgh and unicycled to my home in Somerset, joined by many of the wonderful fans and following I gained over the years. It was a fantastic day. So, Ed, mm. why school in a bag? 
that the first question? He had a fundraising target of, of £8,000 and that was, for us, we we're a small charity, £8,000 was a substantial amount of money and it was hugely big for him, he, he chose that amount and very quickly grew out of that amount and then that continued to rise. I, I came here thinking that you were going to be um, donating $100,000 and Braz just upped it to $370,000, which is equivalent to sending 13,000 school bags to, well, 13,000 children. To experience what he's done and to have completed all that by the age of 22, and in the process to have raised a huge amount of money funding over 15,000 bags, school bags helping that many children around the world. You know, it's almost, you think, how, how on earth does he top that? I'll uh, just talk to all of you now. Don't ask me two questions. <laughs> what I'm going to do next, and how do I feel? <laughs> Ed was the talk of the town when he came back. A true hero to the charity, a myth to the people, a long lost son to his parents. Remember me? But ask him, Ed, why did you do it? And he'll still say, I don't know why I unicycled around the world. I think the trip scratched an itch. Um, for, for, for a time at least. There was thousands of people that gave me water by the side of the road and gave me a bed for the night. If you're putting yourself out there, um, not necessarily just on a unicycle in the middle of a desert somewhere, but, but doing anything. If you're putting yourself out there, people in general want to see you succeed. So it's the night before I set off um, and everything's packed and I'm leaving tomorrow. This is crazy. Actually, mad. I'm not giving up on this lightly. Really, yeah. so it has to go drastically wrong for me to give up on this. Um, no, this is happening. I'm getting all the way around. I'm getting all the way around. Uh, in terms of unicycle times, he is like setting speed records. Unicycler in the West.